That afternoon, Wednesday, Willie stood before the man. I don't have any money, Willie said. Can I still talk to you? The man lifted his face. It was a dirty face with very tired eyes. He needed a shave. My mother, Willie began, said you were unhappy. Is that true? Could be, the man said. What are you unhappy about? The man's eyes narrowed as he studied Willie intently. He said, "How come you want to know?" Willie shrugged. "I think you should go home, kid." I am home. Willie gestured toward the apartment. I live right here, fifth floor.、Uh, where where do you live? Around. Are you unhappy? Willie persisted. The man ran a tongue over his lips. His Adam's apple bobbed. A man has the right to remain silent. He said and closed his eyes. Willie remained standing on the pavement for a while before retreating back to his apartment. Once inside, he looked down from the window. The man was still there. For a moment, Willie was certain the man was looking at the apartment building and the floor where Willie lived. The next day, Thursday. After dropping a nickel in the man's palm, Willie said, "I've never seen anyone look so unhappy as you do. So I, I figure out you must know a lot about it." The man took a deep breath. Well, yeah, maybe, Willie said, "And I need to find a cure for it." A what? A cure for unhappiness. The man pursed his cracked lips and blew a silent whistle. Then he said, "Why? My mother is unhappy. Why is that? My dad went away. How come? I think because he was unhappy. Now my mother's unhappy too, all the time." So if I found a cure for unhappiness, it would be a good thing, wouldn't it? I suppose.、Oh, hey, you—you you don't have anything to eat on you, do you? Willie shook his head and then said, "Would you like some cake?" What kind? I don't know. Cake depends on the cake. On Friday. Willie said to the man, "I found out what kind of cake it is. Yeah, pound cake. But I I don't know why it's called that. Long as this cake is probably don't matter." Neither spoke, and Willie said, "In school, my teacher said there are fish who live in caves, and the caves are so dark the fish don't have eyes." What do you think? Do you believe that? Sure, you do. How come? Because you said so. You mean just because someone said it, you believe it? Not someone, you. Willie was puzzled. But but well, maybe it isn't true. The man grunted. Hey, do you believe it? Willie nodded. Well, you, you're not just anyone. You got eyes, you see. You ain't no fish. Oh, Willie was pleased. What's your name? The man asked. Willie. That's a boy's name. What's your grown-up name? William. And that means another thing. What? I'll take some of that cake. Willie started. You will, 
he asked, surprised. Just shouted, didn't I? Willie suddenly felt excited. It was as if the man had given him a gift. Willie wasn't sure what it was, except that it was important, and that he was glad to have it. For a moment, he just gazed at the man. He saw the lines on the man's face, the way his lips curved, the small scar on the side of his chin, the shape of his eyes, which he now saw were blue. I'll get the cake," Willie cried, and ran back to the apartment. He snatched a box from the refrigerator as well as a knife, then hurried back down to the street. "I cut you a piece," he said, and he opened the box. "Hey, that don't look like a pound of cake," the man said. Willie, alarmed, looked up. But. Like I told you, it don't matter. Willie held his thumb against the cake to make sure the portion was the right size. With a poke of the knife, he made a small mark for the proper width. And just as he was about to cut, the man said, oh, "Hold it!" Willie looked up. "What? What were you doing there with your thumb?" I was measuring the size, the right portion. A person is supposed to get only one portion. Hmm, where'd you learn that? It says so on the box. You can see for yourself. He he held out the box. The man studied the box, then handed it back to Willie. That's just lies, he said. How do you know? William, how can a box say how much a person needs? But it does. The scientists say so. They measured so they know. Then they put it there. Lies, the man repeated. Willie began to feel that this man knew many things. Well, then, how much should I cut? He asked.、And、the man said. You have to look at me, then at the cake, and then you're going to have to decide for yourself. Oh, Willie looked at the cake. The piece was about three inches wide. Willie looked up at the man. After a moment, he cut the cake into two pieces. Each an inch and a half wide, he gave one piece to the man and capped the other in the box. God bless you," the man said as he took the piece and laid it in his left hand. He began to break off pieces with his right hand and put them in his mouth one by one. Each piece was chewed thoughtfully. Willie watched him eat. When the man was done, he licked the crumbs on his fingers. Now I'll give you something, the man said. What? Willie said, surprised. The cure for unhappiness. You know it, Willie asked, eyes wide. The man nodded. What is it? Is this what a person needs? Is always more than they say. Who's they? Willie asked. The man pointed to the cake box. The people on the box, he said. In his mind, Willie repeated what he had been told. Then he gave the man the second piece of cake. The man took it, saying, "Good man," and he ate it. Willie grinned. The next day was Saturday. Willie did not go to school. All morning he kept looking down from his window for the man, but it was raining, and he did not appear. Willie wondered where he was, but. Could not imagine it. 
Willie's mother awoke about noon. Willie sat with her while she ate her breakfast. I found the cure for unhappiness, he announced. Did you? His mother said, as she was reading a memo from the convenience store's owner. Is what a person needs is always more than they say. His mother put her papers down. That's nonsense. Where did you hear that? Well, that man. What man? On the street, the one who was begging. You said he was unhappy, so I asked him. Willie, I told you, I didn't want you to even look at that man. Well, he's a nice man. How do you know? I've talked to him. When? How much? Willie shrank down. I did. That. That's all. Willie, I forbid you to talk to him. Do you understand me? Do you answer me? She was shrill. Yes, Willie said, but he'd already decided he would talk to the man one more time. He needed to explain why he could not talk to him any more. On Sunday. However, the man was not there, nor was he there on Monday. That man is gone, Willie said to his mother, as they walked home from school. I saw I'm not blind. Where do you think he went? I couldn't care less, but. You might as well know I arranged for him to be gone. Willie stopped short. What do you mean? I called the police. We don't need a nuisance like that around here, pestering kids. He wasn't pestering me. Of course he was. How do you know, Willie? I have eyes. I can see. Willie glared at his mother. No, you can't. You you're a fish. You live in a cave. Fish, retorted Mrs. Marker. What do fish have to do with anything, Willie? Don't talk nonsense. My name isn't Willie. It's William, and I know how to keep from being unhappy. I do. He was yelling now. What a person needs is always more than what they say. Always. He turned on his heel, and walked back toward the school. At the corner, he glanced back. His mother was following. He kept going. She kept following.